Hey everyone, welcome back to the series of graph algorithms. In this video, we are going to dis, uh, like decipher about the fact that what are graphs, right? We will see uh, what are the applications of graphs. We will see different types of graphs and later we will also give a formal mathematical definition to graph data structures. So let's just start. So what are graphs? Graph is a collection of nodes, right? Sometimes these nodes are also called as vertices. Right. You will see a lot of people calling them vertices also. So a graph is a collection of vertices or nodes where each node can point to other node. So there can be cases where one node is pointing or is connected to other node. These nodes represent real life entities. So in a lot of applications, these nodes are going to represent some real life entities. And we will also see uh, in some applications of graph that what are those real life entities. So these nodes are going to represent some real life entities and the nodes are connected to each other via edges. So few nodes are going to be connected via each other. And this connection is going to be established by edges. So here you can see these are edges. And these are what you can say vertices or nodes, right? So this diagram represents a typical graph. These circular structures are your nodes and vertices. And here you can see they are connected via these straight lines which are representing the edges right so these nodes are connected by edges and what do these edges represent the edges represent relationship between the entities and node so these nodes are going to be connected via some relationship and this edge is going to see show relationship between these nodes so graph is a very diverse data structure and a very dynamic data structure. It has got a hell lot of application in different fields. So let's just discuss about some of the applications of graph and then we will be able to realize the fact that what are these real life entities and what kind of relationship they possess. So some very famous applications of graphs are definitely Google Maps, right? You use Google Map in almost as your day to day usage. So Google map is something that has like uh, definitely revolutionized our whole livelihood. Using Google maps, you can go from one place to your destination by get getting the shortest path or the shortest route. So here, what we can say is the spots or the places are kind of nodes and the route connecting them is the relationship between these places and that's the edge. Right. So Google map is one of the most important applications and graphs are uh, apply, uh, like applicable in wide variety of fields like in biology. Also in protein to protein interaction graphs, you can see the application of graphs. So this is a protein to protein interaction graph. Apart from that, there are metabolic networks which also implement graphs. In computer science, there are a hell lot of uh, I would say algorithms like network flow algorithms, shortest path algorithm, which is definitely uh, used in Google Maps also. So shortest path algorithms, minimum spanning tree algorithms are also there, which are highly dependent on graphs. These are like some applications of graph only. In electrical engineering, circuit organization is something that is highly dependent on graph. In computer networks, you can see routing algorithms like uh, the algorithm that are helped to route packets over the network use graph algorithms. There are graph problems like vertex coloring problem, which are also used for frequency assignment in a GSM system. So here you can see like graph has got a diverse application in different fields. Graph is playing a major role, right? Now this was about like applications of graph. Now let's just talk about some different type of graphs and then we'll see some more application based on those different types. So what are the types of graphs? So based on the nature of the edge, you can define different type of graphs. So the first type is undirected graph. What is an undirected graph? So here you can see this is the typical example of an undirected graph. Here you can see that in an undirected graph, the edges do not have any direction. Edges do not have any direction. Or you can say it's a bi-directional kind of a nature. Right. That is one node is connected to the other node and this node is connected to this node. Right. So it shows a two way kind of a flow or a two way kind of a nature. So let's just take an example like Facebook. In Facebook, if you consider the nodes as the users, the entity, real life entity are the users. 
so two users are connected via the fact that if they are friend on facebook or not now if you send a friend request to someone on facebook and the person accepts that then you as the person a and the other person as the person b both are friend of each other like a is a friend of b and b is a friend of a it's not like a one way relationship right if you send a request and they accept then also it's a two way relationship like both of you are friends or if they send you a request and you accept it then also you both are friends so this is going to represent a two way relationship so undirected graph don't have any specific direction right and they are represented via these straight lines for representing edges right the next type of graph is directed graphs so here you can see this is a typical example of a directed graph it is also called as digraph right so let's just take an example of something like instagram right so in instagram if a user a if let's say there is a user a and there is a user b right if a, a if a user a starts following user b then that's a one way relationship right let's say you and your friend are there you start following your friend but your friend is not following you back so there is a button of follow back right if the friend is not following you back then this is a one way relationship and if there is a situation where there can be one way relationship directed graphs are used to represent those kind of scenarios so even in things like twitter not only instagram in things like twitter you can follow someone it's not necessary that they are also going to follow you back right it's a one way relationship that you are following them they may or may not be following you back right so this is going to represent kind of a one way flow or a one way relationship right so in there can be a case there can be a case that let's say this node is going to point to this node and this node is also pointing back to this node right but it's not going to happen with all of the nodes right okay so these two distinctions were based on if the graphs are going to possess a direction or not like edges are going to possess a direction or not and generally in digraph you are going to represent the edges using these kind of arrows right so this tail of the arrow is going to be on one node and the head of the arrow is going to be on another node now apart from the directions sometimes these edges are also going to possess some more properties right for example if let's say there are two different cities those cities are going to be connected by some roads right now the dis these roads are going to be the i would say relationship between the two cities or the connection between the two cities and the distance between the two cities are going to be one of the properties of these roads right so there can be cases when your graph is also a weighted graph what is a weighted graph in a weighted graph the edges possess some weight right these weight are going to represent some property of them right so this is a typical example of a weighted graph here you can see these are the nodes these are the edges and every edge is having a weight every edge is having a weight now the best part is you can have weighted graphs in both directed as well as undirected graph so you can have a directed weighted graph or maybe undirected weighted graph or maybe you can have a directed unweighted graph so this these two examples are directed unweighted graph because there is no weight undirected unweighted graph because there is no weight but here you will see that this is an undirected weighted graph similarly if there will be some directions right let's say if there are some directions then this is now a directed weighted graph right so the property of having a weight on the edge can be clubbed with the property of having direction on the edges right so these are some typical type of graphs that you are going to see in the graph theory right okay now as we have talked about basic of graph and the types of graph and the application now let's just give a formal definition to a graph so i found a really interesting medium article and i'm going to pin down that in the description section so the what uh, i found on the i would say article was these cool images and i am going to use these in order to help you understand what formally is defined as the graph right formal definition of a graph so assume that this is a graph structure that is given to you right these circular entities are represented as vertices or nodes and they are connected they are connected via these edges right they are connected via these 
edges or sometimes you can also say these are links right so what are vertices so we will we will define a set this is a set we will define a set v which will be a set of nodes or entities that are going to take part in the overall graph right and then we will define another set e that is a set of edges right this is the set of edges so here you can see this is a set and each element is going to represent a edge okay so now what is a graph so graph graph data structure is a collection of vertices and edges right where a graph g this graph g is an ordered pair of set v vertices and e as a set of edges right so if you will define anywhere graph then it is going to be a collection of v vertices the set v vertices and the set e edges right and inside the set e edge here you can see this is an undirected graph so if this is an undirected graph you are going to have pairs right y pairs because every edge is going to have two nodes associated with it node a node b so a pair is going to store ab now if it is an undirected graph then these pairs are also going to be unordered right the ordering of the pair is not going to matter whereas if you have a directed graph here you can see if you have a directed graph then the pair will be having a specific ordering the ordering of the pair will matter for example v1 points to v2 so if we will store a pair v1 comma v2 this is going to be different than a pair v2 comma v1 right because the ordering matters here the ordering matters so here the set e will be having ordered pairs here the set e was having unordered pair these are all unordered pairs right so this is a formal definition of graph where you have some uh, some vertices inside a set v some unordered or ordered pair depending on what kind of a graph you are going to define in a set e now if you have let's say weight also associated then instead of pairs these are going to be a triplet right the third one is going to represent your corresponding weight the third property of the triplet is going to represent your weight so this is how you can formally define graph in the further videos we are going to take a very in depth dive around more concepts around graph theory graph data structure and graph algorithms so if you guys enjoyed the video please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the like button so that you can appreciate or uh, you can show the enthusiasm about the whole graph series if you have any doubts then don't forget to drop them in the comment section i'll try to reply to as many as possible right and also do share it with your friends so that i can reach to more and more people all over the country and maybe even outside our country so that this series go is going to help everyone to become a 10x engineer so i'll meet you very soon in the next video of this graph uh, graph series till then take care guys bye bye have a great week ahead and love you all